So I'm checking chicks for pasted butts. They are officially just over a week old. I have all my meat birds sequestered. Um, I'm surprised they're not trying to jump out of there, honestly. I grabbed this little layer. I wanted to show you. Well, she has no pasted butts, but I wanted to show you. She's getting her little wing feathers. Oh, is she so cute? Hi, birdie. So sweet. She must like me. She's not trying to run away. <laughs> we try to handle our layer chicks several times a day. We try to hold them, pet them, talk to them. Um, we want them semi-friendly. Once they start free-ranging, uh, I will use dried mealworms. Oh, there are little feathers. Oh, she's so cute. <laughs> and I use that as a treat for them. And I train them to come when they're called. I'll shake the mealworms in front of them. Um, I go shorter distances at first, and then I do longer distances. Um, my last round of chicks, chickens, it got to the point where I could yell anywhere on the farm, <laughs> and those chickens would come running for the mealworms. Um, but it's just a handy thing to do to train them to come when you call and to think that they're getting a treat, and they absolutely love those dried mealworms. And then um, if you have to put your chickens in the coop for the night or something, well, they're, it's gonna be much easier to get them um, to, you know, to go where you need them to go when they're trained to come when you call. I'm gonna keep checking these six here. I'm gonna get all these guys out of this box. I am shocked that they are still in here. It's hilarious. And um, yeah, just wanted to give you a little update. So today is the day we are going to separate the chicks. I am in the process of moving their food and water over and I have this heat lamp shut off and cooling down this one here. This one is on a pulley up to here and then it goes over to that pulley. So you can see it comes down and we have it tied safely to the wall. Um, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unhook that bungee cord up there and then I'm gonna, once this is cool, because this is screaming hot, um, heat lamps are get very, very, very hot and if you get any water on them at all, they will explode. Trust me, I've learned the hard way, so don't get it wet. So I'm gonna unhook from here and then I'm gonna take it back through this little hole and I'm just gonna drop down into this side of the coop. I have a hen in there. I don't think she's doing real well. She's been in here the last two days now. That's completely abnormal for her. So I'm gonna have to give her a check in here later. But that heat lamp is gonna come down through here and it'll be over this area. I'll probably move the food from there. So that way they have a warm spot under the light and then the meat birds will have all of this area to kind of grow into. <clears throat> One of my hens is out there making a lot of noise. Um, once the meat birds get big enough, then we will put them on this side of the lean-to, or of, of this board, I mean. And from this hole, I'll just show you. They will be able to... Hi, girl! Hi! They will be able... Where are you going? To get out under this lean-to and just gives them some outside space somewhere out of the rain out of the snow um and then they'll have this whole hey this whole penned in area this is all fenced in all of these woods and the meat birds will be able to free range this whole area the funny part is <laughs> they won't because they get so big so fat they'll just lay so it'll get to the point where we have to strategically move their food the food will not stay out under here this food is for my layers. They rarely even use it. I think they use it more just for like scratching. <laughs> but um, we'll move this food from here and we'll just put food container, like a food container randomly in a spot to make the meat birds get up and get moving. And you don't want them sitting around wallowing around in the same mud and disgustingness all the time because they get really fat and lazy and stinky. 
So you want to kind of keep them up and moving. I think these girls are in here thinking I have food for them. Sorry, no food for you. So this chicken here is a production red. And this chicken here is an Americana. I have another Americana over there. Let's see if the other chickens are over here. No, they're all down at the garage. So I have this side of the coop totally ready to go. Another tip is to have your lights on some kind of a, a hook like this. This spins open. So then we know that this light is not coming off of this and then it will never fall down into the shavings and catch fire or anything like that. Um, yeah, so I just put down some more pine shavings. I got their food. This is a three gallon waterer and this is a one gallon feeder. And all I'm gonna do now is just one at a time, <laughs> check their butts and move them over. I have a little dish of food in here for the layers and I have a little dish of water. These are the only other waterers and feeders that I have. So this is just what we use. They're cold, so they're all trying to huddle. Um, I'm probably gonna leave like three meat birds over here just for the added warmth for my layers until they get some more of their feathers and temperatures warm up. Next week, it's supposed to be into the 50s. So by then, I'll be able to move all the birds over. All right, I'm gonna start checking bums. There we have it. I left three meat birds in here. Checked everybody's bum. Move their food and water up on that. You wanna elevate their water and their food, especially their water, because it will scratch these pine shavings and they will get into the water and it's super annoying. So, we had that part done. <laughs> they're, they're scared, they're not cold. They did not like what I just did and they really did not like me adding new <laughs> pine shavings. I think they just offered her up as the sacrifice. Go check it out. <laughs> See how it is. I'm pretty sure that's my one that was giving me grief in the very beginning. She's doing pretty dang good. Let's see if I can grab one. I'll show you their wings. Wing update. Those are her getting her little feathers. So all the birds are happy, happy. I have a little bit of a ledge here on the cement block so they can jump up to get a drink. Some of them are tall enough to reach the water. Some of them have a little, a little bit shorter yet so they can jump up on here to get a drink. <clears throat> but yeah, that's pretty much it. We are good to go now. They're gonna be in here for probably a week, 10 days, two weeks, something like that. And then we'll be ready to kick those guys outside. Here are some of my actual laying hens. These are production red and Americana. That is Storm, our bantam rooster. He's our, we only ended up, <laughs> and he crows. Um, we only ended up with three bantams one year, two hens and then him, and both of the girls ended up dying. So we just have him now. <laughs> and he's so small. And I just love his, uh, the way that he, you know, cock-a-doodle-doos that we just don't even want to get rid of him. 
could use a lot of enter entertainment. He loves to jump on Harper's back. <laughs> She's the only one he does it to. And it's hilarious. <coughs> one thing I want to point out here while I'm filming this portion of the homestead. You can see that we throw out a lot of our fruits and vegetables. Um, a lot of the time the chickens won't eat this stuff like they're not notorious for eating citrus food and it's not even really all that good for them but what it does do for them is um, it attracts a lot of bugs <laughs> as it decays so yeah that's why we throw out pretty much all of the fruits and vegetables eggshells um, coffee grinds anything that will attract uh, some bugs these chickens they free range all the time the gate is open for them all the time but um, if they are penned up for any reason like if we go on vacation we pen them um, then they can throw this stuff around and hunt any of the bugs that are underneath <laughs> 